important law you need to know, children, for today's episode. Let's watch conservatives try to justify Worthington's law. <laughs> and that's what we're going to do today. <laughs> Are you ready? You ready to dive in? I'm, I've got my seatbelt on here for <laughs> this we... one. I think it's going to be a bumpy ride. Oh, yeah, it's going to be fun. So we're going to start with Dave Ramsey. We're going to go through him a couple times because he's a, a big proponent of Worthington's law. He just doesn't know it. What causes poor people to be poor? I don't know. What what causes poor people to be poor, Lace? I mean, there's a whole laundry list. Um, uh, mostly you know, just, like mostly just they don't have... Lack of money or yep. lack of resources... Yeah. Uh, sometimes a lack of skills to get the higher level of employment to get a higher level of income. Yeah. I don't know. Well, that Just comes from lack of resources with... too. How do you get the skills if you don't have the resources? Anyway, we're we'll, he'll he'll explain. We're okay. we're totally wrong. Right. He'll explain. What do you believe about that? Because what you believe about that will cause you to take actions in your own life, or not take actions in your own life. What causes poor people to be poor? It's a great question. It'll challenge your theology. It'll challenge your doctrine. It'll challenge your philosophy of life. Because the first thing that happens is if you have a fairly narrow view of life, meaning you haven't gotten out much or don't read much, um, you have just one opinion. And it's usually wrong because it's only a partial observation. Let me give you an example of that. Okay. This article was just published in the um, Washington Post. Uh, the headline reads, Christians are more than twice as likely to blame a person's poverty on lack of effort. Christians are more than twice as likely to blame a person's poverty on lack of effort. Washington Post and Kaiser Family Foundation asked 1,686 American adults to answer the question, what causes poverty? And I'm not going to go through the whole article, but I'll pull out the statistics for you, because they bounce around and do some weird theological stuff that's not even... I don't even know how to end up in the article. It's like they're dealing with post-millennialism and all this other stuff that has nothing to do with the discussion. They really got convoluted. But the bottom line of the article is this. The poll shows that 46% of all Christians said that a lack of effort is generally to blame for a person's poverty compared with 29% of all non-Christians. Now, what you believe about this affects your behaviors. Let me show you how it affects your behaviors. The Washington Post is world-renowned for being anti-Christian and being very liberal in their conservative <laughs> That's not true. That is not true. I know. It's not true at all. They are... Okay, so let, let, me, let me take this one. This one, it'll be a shorty, but... Uh, okay, by day I'm a teacher, and um, when evaluating news sources, I know more, more in the social studies class than in my class, because it pertains to the social studies a little more than mine, but um, students are sort of taught in the United States, like our major publications, kind of which sort of leaning they have and to yeah. a certain degree. And and actually that one is one of the ones that is closer to the middle than most of them. Right. So, and, and I'm not saying publications don't have leanings, but he's just off on that. That's in the scope of our publications here in the United States. It's one of the closer to the middle. Well, he thinks NPR is like a socialist newspaper. And I'm like, really? You think news public radio is socialist? I mean, come on. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it couldn't be more moderate. So, no, but, but it has to be because we got to frame this first, right? We have to frame this as this is biased and leftist. This study that right. Christians are more likely to believe that poor people are poor because their lack of effort because they're lazy. This is this has got to be because it's a leftist biased thing. He's got to frame okay. it that way. Okay, I haven't heard this. I'm going to make a prediction and pray to <laughs> someone that I'm wrong. Um, Ganesh, oh, yeah, whatever. Please, please, please let me not be right. So, okay, he's basically just set up the idea that this survey or poll or whatever um, says that all of these Christians are saying that people are poor because of a lack of effort. Mm -hmm. 
I hope he's not going to turn around and say, because he's been talking about the things we believe, mm -hmm. and I hope he's not going to turn around and almost make it seem like this is a good thing because it means that Christians are not going to have a lack of effort, so that Christians are going to... Yeah, I don't think... Money. I don't think he's... I hope, he, I hope he's not going to go there. He doesn't go there, does he? I, like, don't tell me. We'll find no, out. No, we'll find out. I'm not going to tell you. But what he missed was he, he skipped right over the... The article did... I did read the article. It goes into premillennial... Uh, I'm sorry. Premillennial and postmillennialism post within Christianity. Yeah. Um, there's a difference in... You know, premillennialism was more of a... The, closer to sort of a, I can't, I, I'm not like an expert on this, so I might screw this up a little bit, but it was more of a gospel thought where they were sticking more to the sense of, of, of Jesus, where charity was a bigger thing. And, you know, we need to, you know, you need to care for the poor, that kind of stuff, that kind of older, the, the, the older generation give to the poor, et cetera. Right. That's changed over the last 40 years. In the last really? 40 years, okay. post-millennialism is more of this, um, you know, this concept of uh, wealth and power are a sign of God's favor. Oh. So if the wealthier you are, it's because you're a better person because of God. And he skips right over that oh. because it's really Worthington's law applied to Christianity. <laughs> Even though Worthington's Law is not a real thing, we are going to use it as a real thing going forward because it applies. <laughs> Even though it was a joke on a 90s sitcom or a 90s sketch show, we're going to use it over and over because it applies over and over again to the thought process. How totally terrifying. Okay. I know. That's why I started with that. <laughs> I'm, I'm just going to hope that the, the logic I hoped I wasn't seeing coming really isn't coming. Let's right. hope let's hope let's not. Go. Let's hope not. Beliefs. Okay. You don't believe that, you haven't read the post. All right. It's pretty simple. So let me help you with this. Forty six percent of all Christians said that a lack of effort is generally to blame for a person's poverty compared with twenty nine percent of all non Christians. So let me show you how your belief affects your behavior. The headline was Christians are more more than twice as likely to blame a person's poverty on lack of effort. Let me help you with this. 29%, 46%, that is not more than twice. It's not even half. So you must... Oh, my God. I'm going to kick I'm sorry. Okay so, okay, so the good news is so far he has not gone to the horrible place I was kind of afraid he'd go to. But why are we sitting here and picking on whether it's almost double or not double you can drive a car between those two numbers the spread is pretty big i think that's the point right not like whether it's double or not no the point is is that if you actually oh. if, you, if you actually do the math it's closer to triple the number of christians versus every other group combined because what he's missing is this point 64 percent of americans are christian there are 30,000 denominations, but 64% claim to be a Christian. Okay? So almost two-thirds. So if you take 64% times, what was it, 42% or whatever it was, you're talking about 30% of the people. So 30 out of 100 people in the United States are Christian and believe poor people are lazy. We do it on the other side. Okay. 29% of everybody else, that's Muslims, Jews, atheists, Jains, Mormons, everybody else. 29% of those, of that third, that 36%, believe they're not, or, or do believe that they are, sorry, believe they're lazy. Well, what's 29% of 36? It's like, what, 10? What have I got? 10.5. So that's 10 people out of every 100 in America who aren't Christian believe that. So 30 Christians believe that versus 10 of everybody else. So when they say more than double in the argument, they're right. But Dave can't do simple math. And we've, we go through this every episode. Dave has, 
He has a hard time with math. He's not very good at it. He struggles with math. Right. He's he's leaving out the idea of of what the total number of people really is and what you know what the yeah the difference between the Christian population and non Christian population is and you know right. real math numbers. Um, but honestly. I feel like it just detracts from the actual issue for him to get so hung hung up on the what the gap is between these numbers anyway. No, but what he's he's the point is is A, the Washington Post is biased. B, they're wrong on the math, which shows you they're biased, because they're trying to make this worse than it is. When in fact neither of those things are true. They weren't biased. They were going with the numbers. And B, the math was correct. <laughs> In fact, they underplayed it. Right. Like they could have, had they taken a slightly different strategy of viewing what that total really looked like, um, they could have well, certainly. Right. Well, right. And it, they could have made it look bigger. Yeah. Yeah. Like, and the article they, they, they wanted to look at it. Yeah, in the article, they said more than twice as many Christians are likely to believe that than non-Christians. What they could have said was actually just under three times as many Christians, which sounds bigger. And both of those statements would have been correct. <laughs> and then if you factor in, if you factor in um, atheists, agnostics, non-believers, it's like it's like six or seven times. Atheists and non-believers are less likely to believe that poor people are poor because they're lazy. Christians right. are way more likely. Duncan, is, is Dave going to torture us more with this? Yeah, we're going to do a little bit more and then we're going to skip ahead some. Oh this is, my goodness. Oh, I know. Sorry. Everybody, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm eating away at Lacey's soul just a little bit at a time. Yeah, you're chipping away at it, chipping away at it. Here we go. It's because Dave will tell you I'm the devil. <laughs> up your math because of your skewed bias on your belief system. See how it affects your behaviors. You could have, if, if it were written by the right wing, the alt-right, it could have said, the exact same statistics could have said, less than half of Christians believe, less than half of Christians blame a person's poverty and a lack of effort because it's 46% believe that, according to this survey. 